So Paul Coker here from OneBloodyDrop.com. I'm interviewing Dr. Rob Andrews in a series of uh, videos about diabetes and exercise and metabolism. And this very short video is a special one for people who are long distance runners, like half marathon events and marathons. Um, so Dr. Andrews, th this question's coming out of the blue and you're, you're not expecting it, but in the previous video where we were talking about how you manage your diabetes after aerobic exercise, you were talking about there being a golden window of an hour to replenish your glycogen stores in your muscles to improve your performance on the next event. And that sounds absolutely great. But f speaking personally, and I know a number of other runners who have type one diabetes experiences as well, the moment that I cross the finish line, my blood glucose levels climb astonishingly quickly. And it's because of, I, I believe it's because of all of the uh, hormones that are flying around in my body that make me insulin resistant while I'm exercising and protect me and suddenly I'm no longer exercising so I no longer have that protection of exercise and my blood glucose levels climb quickly so how how should I manage that and and for me eating in that first hour or two after exercise isn't possible because it just makes my blood glucose excursion even higher yeah so Actually, it's, it, the, probably the reason why your blood sugars go up is, is that what happens is as you get towards the end of an event, you're pushing yourself for your time. So what's happening is that some of that end event, you're actually running anaerobically. You're building up an oxygen debt. And when you run anaerobically, you don't completely burn your glucose and you build up lactate. And what happens is when you stop an event having, having not completely burnt the glucose, is the rest of the glucose that should have been burnt during the event gets burnt. Now you've got oxygen. So you return the glucose to the, to, the, to the blood, and that's the reason why the glucose goes up. So, so in most people who are doing an event that they're trying to get a time, what happens is their, their glucose can tend to go up after the event, um, and that's the returning of you breaking down the lactate that you've built up in the event. So perhaps would a good strategy then be to go for a gentle yes. warm-down jog? Yeah. So, so the key thing for that is, is, is that what you want to do is, is, and that's the easiest way of managing a blood sugar that's gone up with exercise or that goes up after the exercise, is just to prolong the, uh, your warm down or do a, a proper warm down and that will actually bring it down um, fr fr from, that, from that point of view. The other thing that stops the lactate going, but lots of people don't want to do it, but the elite athletes do it, is getting into a cold bath. <laughs> um, you know, so you'll see, you know, the tennis players, as soon as they get off the court, they they, they, they hit a cold, an ice cold bath, um, and that's to, you know, so, to, 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 to. So I'd always assumed that the ice cold bath was just to reduce inflammation. Yeah, it does have that inflammation. as well. That helps for the lactate. But I, I hadn't realised that there was a connection to lactate as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but from the eating point of view, I totally understand that 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 that, that, that it can be really really difficult. I mean, from the from the marathon point of view, having done an event. It, you're unlikely to run again for a number of, uh, you know, that distance for, for, for a gain. So it only becomes a problem if you're doing the, you know, the world championship thing that you were doing of doing a continuous number of marathons in a year. Then we have to really make sure that we work out how to get you that fueling. But for the majority of people, it, it doesn't matter if they miss out on that one fueling event, provided in their training, they're always doing the fueling. Excellent. I think that the important thing there was, was really how to manage that blood glucose spike after an event. I think that the, the eating would be nice to do so that my performance improves, but actually how do I manage that blood glucose excursion after an event? And, and my previous strategy has always been just to, to walk gently for, the, for 10 or 15 minutes. And, and actually the moment I cross the finish line, I also give a half a unit of insulin. And whilst it doesn't actually stop my blood glucose levels from climbing, it stops them getting into the 20s and only into the mid teens. Um, yeah, no, and, and you brought up another point: is, is mind out for that correction within an hour of, of a of a uh, of an event, because it generally comes back and stings you. You know, it, it gets you two, three hours later that you have a low blood sugar. Yeah, um, and, and I think that that's actually a really important point in in terms of any aerobic exercise. Um, if, if you're experiencing a high blood glucose level post exercise, then be very conservative about treating it. Yeah. Um, uh, my own view, I don't know if your, yours would agree with this, is my own view through 40 years of experience of living with type 1 diabetes is always be conservative with giving insulin. If, I, if my blood glucose levels are 14, 16, 18, I can come along and I can give a huge great correction dose to bring them down quickly. But once I've given insulin, I can't take it away. So if I've overcorrected, it then becomes a problem and my blood glucose levels crash. 
and my own strategy is to give a few units and start watching it come down and then as it starts to come down then then leave a couple of hours maybe two or three hours and then give some more because my view is I'm better off to bring my blood glucose levels down in a slow glide than a fast crash. Yeah and the other way you can do is what's called cushioning so if you've taken some insulin if you take some food that's slow release then you cushion the fall yeah. So you stop that fall continuing by actually knowing that your, some of your nutrients is going to be ready to later on. So that's why another reason for eating afterwards is if you are going to be doing a correction, let's make sure you get some food on board and cushion that fall. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you, Dr. Andrews. Okay. And uh, again, your insights are just incredible. And I'm learning so much, which for me, after 40 years of living with type, B, type 1 diabetes, to sit here and say that is just incredible. So. Uh, I just can't thank you enough for the information you're sharing with us today. And uh, in the next video, uh, we will be talking about anaerobic exercise, which has, a, as I understand it, a completely different model for managing diabetes. Um, so we'll see you on the next video. Yeah.